Thank you, Juan Carlos. Thank you very much indeed. An excellent start to our work. I would now like to introduce our first keynote speaker, Al Gore, former Vice President of the United States of America and co-founder and former President of Globe Inter International. Former Vice President Al Gore is the founder and chairman of the Climate Reality Project, a non-profit devoted to solving the climate crisis. In 2007, Al Gore, with the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. It therefore gives me enormous pleasure to introduce Al Gore's video message recorded yesterday in Glasgow. Welcome to GLOBE's meeting. Uh, I'm Al Gore, uh, one of the original founders of GLOBE, and I want to congratulate all of you in this organization on the 30th anniversary of GLOBE's founding. Back in 1991, on the eve of the Rio de Janeiro Earth Summit, which led to the treaty that uh, in turn led to all of these conferences of the parties, this being the 26th in the series here in Glasgow, we wanted to, to found an organization for legislators, or legislators around the world to play their part by cooperating uh, together, sharing information, sharing insights, working together to advance the cause of saving the global ecological balance. Uh, one of my co-founders at that time was John Kerry. He and I have worked together in all the years since. The first head of GLOBE was the late Senator John Hines from Pennsylvania, a Republican, by the way. Uh, and we had colleagues from the European Union, uh, from uh, the Japanese uh, diet, from the Russian Duma, uh, and elsewhere. And now, of course, the organization has grown because of the work that all of you are doing. And I'm so proud that uh, GLOBE has become the official uh, partner of the UNFCCC, representing legislators around the world in this effort to save the global climate balance. Of course, when heads of state and executive branch authorities in nations around the world make proclamations and issue proposals, it's up to legislators to actually do the work of translating uh, those proposals into legislation that has the force of law and embodies the intention uh, that we all have to reduce emissions, to preserve nature and forests and the ocean, uh, and to make the systemic transformations that are necessary in order to save the climate balance. Of course, as all of you know, we are still, unfortunately, seeing the climate crisis get worse faster than we are yet implementing solutions. But I, for one, believe very strongly that we are right at the long-awaited political tipping point. Uh, the many pledges for action here at this conference of the parties are impressive. But legislators will be among those who have to hold the people to their pledges, uh, whether they're governments, uh, of nations or cities or regions, whether they are investors or banks uh, or companies uh, or other organizations, if they are making a net zero pledge, they now must be held to it. I'm very encouraged that the Secretary General of the United Nations has announced his intention to stand up a new institution within the UN that will monitor and regularly assess the integrity of the commitments being made by all of those individuals and organizations that are making the net zero pledges. We have a lot of follow up work to do, but the number one uh, task is to reduce emissions because we are now using the thin shell of atmosphere surrounding our planet as if it was an open sewer, putting 162 million tons of man-made heat-trapping global warming pollution into the sky every single day. And of course, it lingers there, molecule for molecule, on an average of 100 years. Uh, and the accumulated amount now traps as much extra heat as would be released by 
100,000 first-generation atomic bombs exploding every 24 hours on Earth. That's what's disrupting the water cycle. That's what's uh, putting so much more water vapor into the sky, feeding these atmospheric rivers that encounter uh, storm conditions as they come across the land. Uh, and that results in these massive downpours, much larger and much more frequent than in the past. And the floods and mudslides that result have caused devastating consequences. The same extra heat also pulls the moisture out of the top layer of the soil and therefore the droughts take hold more quickly and last longer and go deeper. This is now having an impact on agriculture. We're also seeing increasing temperatures combined with increasing humidity expand the areas of our world in the tropics and subtropics that are becoming in some cases literally unlivable. That's why the Lancet Commission has told us that if we do not change course quickly, we could see as many as one billion climate refugees and migrants in the balance of this century. Of course, as legislators, you know that this runs the risk of disrupting the political equilibrium in country after country. We've seen the unfortunate wave of populist authoritarianism in some of the countries that have been disrupted in their political equilibrium al already. We're seeing also uh, the accelerated melting of ice, particularly the ice mass in Greenland and West Antarctica, now East Antarctica, is beginning to melt at an accelerated rate uh, as well. That leads to increased sea level rise. We're seeing tropical diseases move poleward uh, into regions where uh, new diseases are encountered by people who have not built up uh, immunities over the generations. And of course, air travel has a lot to do with that as well, but the conditions that make these diseases endemic uh, are driven by the climate crisis. Uh, there are many other consequences. But here's the good news. Uh, in the years since GLOBE was founded, we have also seen the emergence of extremely effective solutions for the climate crisis. For example, I'm heartened by the news that in 2020, last year, if you look at all of the new electricity generation built and installed worldwide, 90% of it was renewable, most all of it solar and wind. Because it's cheaper now in two thirds of the world uh, than electricity from burning fossil fuels. And within only three years, it will be cheaper in 100% of the world. Secondly, we are now seeing the uh, advancing popularity of electric vehicles. Uh, leading to s many nations and regions uh, legislating the phase out of internal combustion engines. Uh, transportation is one of the major sources of the global warming pollution as well. Within the next two years, we are going to see the most popular model categories of cars become cheaper in the EV version than they are in the internal combustion engine version. We have had some Im impressive pledges this week already in uh, where protecting forests are concerned. Not enough is being done. We're still losing a football pitch worth of forest every second of every day. But with the advancing pledges to protect forests, we now have some hope that we will begin to reverse that process as well. Regenerative agriculture is leading to more hope that we can sequester more carbon in the topsoils of the world. In the process, making farms more resilient to the wind and water erosion, making the soils more fertile with more carbon content in the soils and making the food more nutritious and less reliant on harmful uh, chemicals. Uh, these and other solutions are now spreading throughout the world. Not fast enough yet, but that's another reason why the activities of legislators all around the world uh, are so crucial to saving the future of human civilization. I am optimistic. Uh, I see very clearly what the danger is. So many have described this as an existential crisis. And of course it is. Just look at the fires that have been emerging ar around the world. It, it is really absolutely uh, stunning. But Mother Nature has also awakened a much stronger 
uh, voice uh, from the people at the grassroots in every nation demanding that governments do more. That makes the job of legislators even more important to translate the popular will into effective legislative solutions for the climate crisis. So we have the urgency, we have the tools we need to solve the climate crisis, we need the legislation. Uh, the only missing element is sufficient political will, but political will is itself a renewable resource. And legislators who are leading in every country can renew that political will and then translate it into effective solutions. So thank you for what you're doing in GLOBE. Let's keep up the good work and accelerate the pace. Thank you very much.